Good morning, BFC. Welcome to my living room. Merry Christmas. I hope you guys are having a wonderful day. Listen, I wanted to invite you into my home because I wanted to show you a little something special here. Right next to me is a Christmas tree. This is a special tree because I bought this tree back in 1998. In fact, this is the tree's 25th Christmas. And believe it or not, every year when we put the tree up, it sheds all of its needles. Uh, or not all of them, I should say, but, but it seems like all of them. When we run the vacuum over the floor and pick them up, we dump off you know, a whole pile of needles in the trash can. And you would think that by now the tree would be bald, and maybe it is balding, but we're adding ornaments to it every year as we collect ornaments throughout the year. And it's become a tradition for us, and it's full of our family ornaments, and, and it kind of tells the story of our family. And, you know, I was thinking about that and about how our history sort of tells the story of our families. And... My great-great-grandma Feeney uh, immigrated to the United States from Germany. She was a Jewish immigrant. She came through Ellis Island. And the interesting thing about that story is that you can actually go to Ellis Island. My grandmother has told me this. And you can find her uh, name inscribed on a wall there in Ellis Island. And I imagine back then, this was over 100 years ago when she came through Ellis Island, she passed the Statue of Liberty and... Uh, what, a, what a sight that must have been. You know, her, her dream, I imagine, was just to come here and to, to experience a new life. Um, you know, there was a poem that was written about that famous statue, the Statue of Liberty. And I want to read that poem to you this morning. The, the, the words of the poem were written by an American Jewish poet. Her name was Emma Lazarus. And this is the words she wrote as she was asked to sort of capture the moment and what this statue would mean for America. The name of her poem is called The New Colossus. And this is what she says. She says, Not like the brazen giant of Greek fame with conquering limbs astride from land to land. Here at our sea awashed, sunset gates shall stand. A mighty woman with a torch, whose flame is the imprisoned lightning, and her name, mother of exiles. From her beacon hand glows worldwide welcome. Her mild eyes command the air-bridged harbor that twin cities frame. Keep ancient lands your story pomp, cries she with silent lips. Give me your tired, your poor, your humbled masses, yearning to breathe free. The wretched refuse of your teeming shore, send these, the homeless tempest tossed to me. I lift my lamp beside the golden door. You know, countless millions um, have come through Ellis Island and have passed that great statue that represents those golden doors to freedom. But centuries earlier, in a little town in Bethlehem, a child was born, the Bible tells us, and a son was given, and it says, and the government would be on his shoulders, and he would be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, and Prince of Peace, and of the greatness of his government and of his peace, there would be no end. In fact, Jesus was just like that golden gate. In fact, he said of himself, he said, I am the way and the truth and the life. And no one comes to the Father except through me. Why did he come? Well, he came because he loves you. He came to make a way for you to get to heaven. He came in the humblest way possible to show you that no one is too lowly, too poor, or too dirty, or too far gone to be rescued. You know, there was no room for them in the end. And Mary and Joseph were left out in the cold. I wonder if sometimes you feel like you're left out. Do you sometimes feel like there's no room for you in this world? You know, the manger and the stable, they remind us that God has a special place for those who feel left out. For all the children watching this video, I, I want to read a special story to you. This this is a story that was written by Max Lucado, and it's, it's called The Crippled Land. And so I'm going to read that with you, and I would invite you to just to sit down together as a family and listen as Max Lucado describes the story of one special little lamb. 
He says, Once upon a time, in a sunny valley, there lived a little lamb named Joshua. He was white with black spots, black feet, and sad eyes. Joshua felt sad when the other lambs with white wool and no spots were running around and playing. He felt sad when he saw the other sheep with their moms and their dads because he didn't have a mom and a dad. But he felt saddest most when he saw the other lambs running and jumping because he couldn't. For you see, Josh had been born with one leg that didn't work right. He was crippled. He always limped when he walked. That's why he always watched while the other lambs ran and played. Josh felt sad and alone, except when Abigail was around. See, Abigail was Josh's best friend. She didn't look like a friend for a lamb. She was an old cow. She was brown with white blotches that looked like rain puddles on a path. Her belly was as round as a barrel, and her voice was always kind and friendly. Some of Josh's favorite hours were spent with Abigail. They loved to pretend that they were on adventures in distant lands. Josh liked to listen to Abigail tell stories about the stars. They would spend hours on the hill looking into the valley. They were good friends. But even with a friend like Abigail, Josh still got sad. It made him sad to be the only lamb who could not run and jump and play in the grass. That's when Abigail would turn to him and say, Don't be sad, little Joshua. God has a special place for those who feel left out. Josh wanted to believe her, but it was hard. Some days he just felt alone. He really felt alone the day the shepherds decided to take the lambs to the next valley where there was more grass. The sheep had been in this valley so long that the ground was nearly bare. All the sheep were excited when the shepherds told them they were going to a new meadow. As they prepared to leave, Josh hobbled over and took his place on the edge of the group. But the others started laughing at him. You're too slow to go all the way to the next valley. Go back, slow poke. We'll never get there if we have to wait on you. Go back, Joshua. That's when Josh looked up and he saw the shepherd standing in front of him. They are right, my little Joshua. You better go back. This trip is too long for you. Go and spend the night in the stable. Josh looked at the man for a long time. Then he turned slowly and began limping away. When Josh got to the top of the hill, he looked down and he saw all the other sheep headed toward the green grass. Never before had he felt so left out. A big tear slipped out of his eye, rolled down his nose, and fell on a rock. Just then, he heard Abigail behind him, and Abigail said what she always said when Joshua felt sad. Don't be sad, little Joshua. God has a special place for those who feel left out. Slowly, the two friends turned, and they walked to the stable together. By the time they got to the little barn, the sun was setting like a big orange ball. Josh and Abigail went inside and began to eat some hay out of the feed box. They were very hungry, and the hay tasted good. For a little while, Joshua forgot that he had been left behind. Go to sleep, little friend, Abigail said, after they finished eating. You've had a hard day. Josh was tired, so he lay down in the corner on some straw, and he closed his eyes. He felt Abigail lie down beside him, and he was glad to have Abigail as a friend. Soon Josh was asleep. At first he slept soundly, curled up against Abigail's back. In his sleep he dreamed, and he dreamed of running and jumping just like the other sheep. He dreamed of long walks with Abigail through the valley. He dreamed of being in a place where he never felt left out. Suddenly, strange noises woke him up. Abigail, he whispered, wake up, I'm scared. 
Abigail lifted her big head and looked around. The stable was dark except for a small lamp which hung on the wall. Somebody's in here, Josh whispered. They looked across the dimly lit stable and there lying on some fresh hay in the feed box was a baby. A young woman was resting on a big pile of hay beside the feed box. Joshua looked at Abigail, thinking his friend could tell him what was going on, but Abigail was just as surprised as Josh. Josh looked again at the woman and the child. Then he limped across the stable. He stopped next to the mother and he looked into the baby's face. The baby was crying. He was cold. The woman picked up the baby and put him on the hay next to her. Josh looked around the stable for something to keep the baby warm. Usually there were blankets, but not tonight. The shepherds had taken them on their trip across the valley. Then Joshua remembered his own soft, warm wool. Timidly, he walked over and he curled up close to the baby. Thank you, little lamb, the baby's mother said softly. Soon the little child stopped crying and went back to sleep. And about that time, a man entered the stable carrying some rags. I'm sorry, Mary, he explained. This is all the cover that I could find. It's okay, she answered. This little lamb, lamb has kept the new king warm. A king? Joshua looked at the baby and wondered who he might be. His name is Jesus. Mary spoke as if she knew Josh's question. God's son, he came from heaven to teach us about God. Just then, there was another noise at the door. It was the shepherds, the ones who had left Joshua behind. Their eyes were big and they were excited. We saw a bright light and heard the angels, they began. Then they saw Joshua next to the baby. Joshua, do you know who this baby is? He does now. It was the young mother who was speaking. She looked at Joshua and smiled. God has heard your prayers, little lamb. This little baby is the answer. Joshua looked down at the baby. Somehow he knew this was a special child and this was a special moment. He also understood why he had been born with a crippled leg. If he had been like the other sheep, he would have been in the valley, but since he was different, he was in the stable, among the first to welcome Jesus into the world. Joshua turned and walked back to Abigail and took his place beside his friend. You were right, he told her. God does have a special place for me. Listen, I want to tell you that God came to his creation, not in royal robes or in a great procession or a large motorcade, but as a baby. He came not dressed in fine linen, nor was he wearing expensive jewelry or designer clothes. Instead, he came in the most humble way possible. He came as a baby, born in a stable, wrapped in swaddling clothes, and lying in a manger. The timing and the circumstances surrounding his arrival were intentional. This was part of God's grand rescue plan. He came to a lost and dying world in the most humble way so that the outcast, the poor, the downtrodden, the sick, the lame, the depressed, and the sad would be able to find him and approach him. He was not in some distant, high-on-the-hill palace surrounded by guards, but for the seeker, he can be found lying in a manger or walking a dusty road with simple travelers or wiping the tears from the eyes of the weathered-faced widow, or touching the leper's wounds. He can be found in hospital rooms, back alleys, dark basements, and in some of the loneliest and most obscure places on earth. He can be found right here, right where you are. And his birth reminds us that he loves us, and that he has a special place for those who feel left out. And he has a special place for you. Would you pray with me? God, we want to thank you so much for the gift of your son, Jesus. And on this Christmas day, 
We want to remember how much you love us and the gift that you gave us and that you are approachable and that you are here for us and that you have a special place for each of us. We love you, Lord. Would you bless this day, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you and Merry Christmas.